Glass is one of those things that you don't really think about because you see through it. You see past it. But it's in our world all around us. My day job is to support the research and the teaching of the chemistry department and then all the other departments that would happen to use glass. Geology, physics, psychology, biology. Um, we're the only shop on campus. I started in the department in 1981. The guy that was over the glass shop at that time asked me if I'd like to be his apprentice. And I said, I don't know anything about it. I didn't even really know there was a glass shop in the building. So I did a four-year apprenticeship, started work with him in 1986. Then he retired in 1996 or 97, and I've been running it by myself since then. A lot of it is research. Faculty, they'll have grad students, postdocs. Each one has their own project that they're working on. They may come down with a, a need, they're going to run an experiment, and um, they need a piece of glassware to do this. They know the direction, and they know they need this piece of equipment, but they don't know exactly how to build it. The most difficult thing to learn when you're heating a piece of glass is that you have to rotate it, because if you don't, it's just going to get hot on one side. So to learn to get both hands to turn at the same speed at the same time and then keep it level and straight, it took a little while to master that skill. So the lathe rotates the glass for us. The tailstock on the lathe moves, so I can feed in glass or take glass away, and then by blowing air into it, I can expand the glass. Even though a machine is involved, it's a handmade piece. We've had literally days involved in something, get down to the last seal and you hear it go tink and you see the crack run through it so then you just got to start all over. There's some things that are make you scratch your head. One morning my phone rang, it was from the School of Music and they said Don can you repair a glass flute? I was like I don't I don't know, I've never seen one before. But now my curiosity was piqued. So I was like, okay, uh, send the guy over. His name was Brent Michael Davids. He was from Minnesota and he was a music composer. And they brought him here to give a concert and he played the glass flute. When he got off the airplane and opened up his case, his flute was in a hundred pieces. So he came over and we took the flute and Scotch taped it back together like a jigsaw puzzle where all the broken pieces are so I could get some rough dimensions from it. And we spent all day Monday and all day Tuesday and Wednesday morning he walked out with the flute, called me afterwards, said it sounded great and told me that on the weekend he was traveling to DC and he was playing at the Library of Congress. So on Monday morning I'd never heard of a glass flute. By Wednesday it was given a concert at the IU School of Music, and then in the weekend it was at DC. The favorite part is working with the students. You, you begin to develop relationships with somebody that's going to be here for four or five years, and then see them be successful in the lab. The second part is just seeing the glass come from this to this and, and watch it become fluid while it's hot and then see the finished product. When you raise the oven door in the mornings, usually we run it overnight, and it's all clean and sparkling, and the light reflects off of it, and it's a satisfying feeling to, to raise the oven door in the morning and see everything that you've created, and it's still in one piece. 